it is always a joy. It always makes me nervous um, to, to come here. And it's an honor that Pastor Larry asks me to, uh, to do this. Um, and you might ask, who am I? Who am I? I am Chris Stevens. I'm a husband. I'm a dad. I'm a grandfather. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a business owner. Um, I'm American by birth, biker by choice. Um, I am a minister on the ministry team in this church. Um, like I said at the beginning, my name is Chris Stevens. Most all y'all know who I am, but there might be somebody online that's like, who's this guy? But what I'm going to share with you guys tonight and what I've felt that the Lord has laid on me is who Jesus is to me. Um, I have shared this before at our biker church that we have, parts of this, but I just was led that, you know, but who is Jesus to me? He's so, he's so much to me. He is, uh, Jesus, first and foremost, is my friend. Um, he's always that friend for me. He's that friend that would lay his life down for me. He's that friend that fights for me. He's that friend that listens to me. He's my brother. And I mean that with all sincerity. I don't mean that to be degrading because in the biker world that where I, where I come from, that means everything. And so he's a brother to me with a capital B. That's not with a lower B, that's with a capital B. And um, a, a dear friend of mine gave me this right here, which I, I'm getting ready to read for you. He rode with the 1% Club. He rides, and, and you may or may not know what 1% Club means. That means that that's like your secular groups. That is not a Christian group. That is a uh, more of your hardcore group. But he shared this with me, and I, I felt it an honor that he shared it with me. But it goes, don't call me brother. And it's folks that like to ride... I'm not looking at rubs. Rubs are posers. Those are guys that, you know, have a brand new bike in the garage, has 200 miles on it, and they've had it for four years. You know, um, they went and bought brand new chaps, and they don't have bug stains on them because they don't wear them. Uh, their vest is brand new. It's not faded out. You know, they're, they're posers. So it says, I'm not looking for rubs, so keep in mind and don't call me brother. I am not, probably ever will be your brother. You have not earned the right. Just because you read the copy of fill in the blank of local motorcycle magazine, that bikers call each other brothers does not mean you have to run out and find somebody with a Harley and call them broke. So, you can be a biker too. Here's why. You have never pulled an all-nighter with me. You have never helped me fix my bike on the side of the road in the rain. You've never wasted your weekend helping me dig through the junk pile looking for that one part just to make my bike run. You have never loaned me the tool that I didn't have to put that one part on. Are you starting to get the picture? Just remove the word brother from your vocabulary. Trust me on this one. Have a fancy custom bike. Now, a lot of people look at me, but wait until the next paragraph. <laughs> Have a fancy custom bike that somebody else built. Having a brand new bike with only three digits on the odometer does not make you a biker. As far as I'm concerned, if you can't wrench on your own scoot, then you don't have no reason to, to own it. You could be a biker and a brother who owns one of the above, the fancy custom bike, but that is not what made you a biker. In my mind, a biker is a person who loves to ride, loves to ride the bike just for the pure fun of it. 
getting out in the air and seeing the world in person and not through a windshield. Or maybe you just have a thing for getting pooped in the face by a bug at 60 miles per hour. <laughs> a biker to me is not someone who got a bike just to look cool or because the guy down the road has one and you need a bigger, prettier one to prove you're somebody important. If this sounds like you, sell your bike. You'll never make it. Being a biker is dying a little more every hour that you can't get out and crack the throttle and cruising down the highway. It's a way of life, not a hobby. If you have ever depressed because you rode your bike and nobody saw you, hang it up. You are a world-class rub. Once again, sell your bike. Maybe you might want to buy a Porsche instead. Here's a bit of advice. The next time you're around a group of bikers, find yourself a gray beard. Buy him a beer, a cup of coffee, and ask him a question about his bike or such to kick off the conversation. As long as he keeps talking, keep buying. If you treat him with respect, shut up and listen to him, you just might surprise at what you learn from his stories. That's a brother to me. That's what that means. And I know there's some of you guys in here that knows what, you know, I have read that before. But a friend, John 15, 13 through 15. Now this is red letters. Greater love has none of the, this than to lay down one's life for his friend. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servant, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friend for all things that I've heard from my father I have made known to you. What this tells me that we have went from the servant level to the friend level. In Jesus. This is Jesus talking. It's in red. And so he tells us right here that he wants to be our friend. We just have to let him in. And you can fill that word in with brother. As long as you make it a capital B. This... As I was saying, a friend that would lay down his life for me. John 3.16. Everybody knows that. The football players even know that. The people behind the goalposts know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And it's... For God did not send His Son, 17, God did not send His Son into the world to, to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. What that tells me right there, I mean, like I said, everybody has read this, everybody has, but sometimes it just comes off the page different to others than to others. And what this tells me about Jesus, about my friend, about my brother, is that it's not about him. It's about us. He done this for us. All these, quote, other gods, these other fill-in-the-blank religions, you got to do for them. God done it for us. And it's just, he is an amazing friend to me. He didn't die on the cross for himself. He died on the cross for us. He laid down his life. Now, we all probably have this friend that calls you up when he or she only needs something. And that's not, that's not my Jesus. My Jesus 
done it for me. It's backwards. Sometimes I'm the friend that only calls him up. <laughs> Make sense? Sometimes it just feels like I'm always calling him. Hey, my kids, you know, or hey, I, the shop needs this. But he's my friend. He died on the cross for us. He laid down his life so we can have eternal life with him in paradise. He did that for us. As David walked into the battle to fight Goliath, he was, for the most part, unarmed. He had a sling and some rocks. And I got some of those rocks. <laughs> My buddy Amos hooked me up. But he was basically unarmed. But he knew that he was fully armed with the biggest arsenal he could ever possibly have. He had God on his side. What more do you need? James sung about it tonight. What more do you need if God is on your side? When you have God on your side, you can accomplish anything. Going into our daily lives, sometimes, sometimes we have to make do with what we have. As I said in 1 Samuel with David and Goliath, they tried to armor him up. They tried to give him a big sword. That'd be like putting me up here in a shirt and tie. It just would not work. You deal with what you got, and this is what you got. But he fights our fights. He fights our battles for, him, for us. And the word is very powerful. You got to use it. I mean, yeah, right now is not the time to talk about it. But there's times that God has fought my enemies for me and did exactly what his word told me it was going to do. And you got to be cautious with your words, even against your enemies. You got to pray for your enemies. And that's hard to do. Sometimes you just don't want to. Psalms 144, 1 through 2. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my love and kindness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Not that he just protects you, but he's the teacher. He teaches you to fight your battles. And he teaches you to fight them with the word. The word is the sword. That's what you fight them with. When all else fails, the word is always there for you. And you don't wait until all else fails. You pick it up first. And as I said, he's a teacher. And as the word shows us, he's also my healer. He teaches me and he heals me. My favorite scripture in the Bible is John 14, 12 through 15. And again, this is in red letters. And it says, most assuredly I say to you, and I did a Bible study one time in, in a CMA, and I did it on just the word assuredly, because it pops up all the time, and it's always red. And I'm like, okay, what are you trying to tell me? And another word for assuredly is promise. So you could put that in there. Mostly, I promise you. I promise you. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these you will do because I go to my Father. And, that, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And what did he do? What did Jesus do? 
This tells us, he's teaching us, he shows us, because we're supposed to lead by, he leads us by example. And, I mean, he, he laid on the sick. He laid hands on the sick and they were healed. He, he laid hands on the lame and they stood up and walked. And so, he prayed for a little girl that wasn't even there and she was made well. And so you got to ask yourself, not even to mention, he was the ultimate caterer. I mean, he was the caterer of all caterers. I mean, he had a two-piece fish dinner and he fed thousands of people. I mean, my Sheila over there at Biker Church, she can feed the masses, but not quite like Jesus. Last but not least, he ruined a funeral. He told Lazarus to stand up and he walked out. I mean, so he is awesome. He is a friend. He is a healer. He is a teacher. And then he tells us that we're going to do greater things than he does. When's that going to start? Right? I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to feel it. I'm expecting Terry Warman's leg to come back. On earth. On earth as in heaven. Page three. As I said, we got to lead by... He leads us by example. We have to be... Ephesians 5, 1 through 12. We have to be imitators of God. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Again, he's given us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet-smelling aroma. He wants us to imitate him. He wants us to be just like him. And that's the easy path. It's kind of like happy wife, happy life. Makes life a whole lot easier. He wants us to heal the sick. He wants us to teach the gospel to every living creature. And so he just, he wants us to be like him. He's our healer. Psalms 103, 1 through 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities. Thank you, Jesus. Who heals all of our diseases. We can stop right there. Again, he's healing the sick. Who redeems... Your life from destruction who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies. As I said, we could stop in verse 3 with all our diseases. He does this for us. And this was the scripture that we stood on a couple of years back. He heals us. He is the healer who gives us strength, the power to do what he does. He is the mighty teacher. He's also my financer. Luke 12, 15 through 21. Then he said to them, Take heed and beware of <laughs> controversiness, for one life does not consist of abandon." abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yields plentiful. And he thought to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my harleys, I mean my crops? (laughs) So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build a greater And there I will store all my Harleys and my goods. 
And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, I like that. I like that. This might... This night your soul will require for you, then those will those things be <laughs> which you have provided. So he who laid up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Whew, that was hard. He's not a lazy God. He doesn't just coast. This guy here wanted to build a bigger barn, put more stuff in it, so he didn't have to do any more. That's what I seen out of it. That's what I read. He's a God that makes things happen. He teaches us here, not for ourselves only, but for others at the same time. He wants us to bless others. And that barn that this guy was thinking in his head that was going to be big enough for his stuff, he didn't even put in the mind of it overflowing. And what he can share with others with what he has it overflowing. He does not tell us to save and to work. I mean, he, he tells us to save and to work. He tells us that you know, we shouldn't just go out and spend everything we have. He does tell us that we need to take our money or whatever it is and to save it. Because that's not the bad part. I feel the part that this guy messed up on is he was storing it up for himself. It was mine, mine, mine. And that's not our God. If we would continue on reading the word... A couple of verses forward more. It tells us that if my God takes care of the birds in the air, He can surely take care of me. What are we... Because we have dominion over all living creatures on this earth. So if we have power over them, that kind of puts us up the food chain. That puts us... So if He's taking care of the birds, He can surely take care of us. Last but not least, he's my savior. I'm a simple man. I don't make things too hard, or at least I try not to make them too hard. I would love to be one of those guys that could memorize what notes I have up here and just stand up here and continue on, as we see Pastor do every week. It's amazing how long he can talk, and, and, and then he picks up his note and turns them after he doesn't even look at them. You know, he, he knows exactly where he is in his notes. It's amazing to watch him work. But like I said, I'm a simple guy. And if I read it in God's Word, I believe it. I don't try to redevelop the Word. And the word to me comes kiss. Now, I used to say, keep it simple, stupid. But my wife taught me, keep it simple, sexy. <laughs> Just saying. So, <laughs> I'm waiting for James to start throwing tomatoes or something up here. <laughs> Luke. 23, 34 through 43. Jesus on the cross. This is when Jesus is on the cross with the two, two men on the right, and on the, or the one man on the right and one man on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garment and cast lots. That tells us right there, we all know, that if they're not tearing up his garments that they're, they're, they're keeping them. They're precious. They're very nice. 
And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them snared, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ, the chosen of God, the soldiers also mocked him. Coming and offer him soured wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And the inscription also was, was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanging, blasphemy him, saying, If you are Christ, save yourself and us. Now, if we would back up, we would see that both of the prisoners were mocking him at the beginning of this. And the, aunt, and the other answered, rebuking him. Okay, so, and this is what I'm reading. At the beginning, they were both mocking Jesus. Now the one, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit is tapping him on the shoulder and saying, um, you better do something. The other one answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same con condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, he promised the man, I say to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Now, that scripture, I've seen a pastor do a two-hour teaching and, and longer just on the cross. The two men, thieves, depends on which, which gospel you read. One talk calls them thieves, one calls them robbers, one calls them rebels. Depends on the gospel that you read. I call them dudes on the cross. What do I see? Remember, kiss. Keep it simple. What I see is we may not have a second chance. These guys were going to die on that cross. I have a lot of times as I'm out on the bike, as we're, if we're at a bar or down the strip or in prison, doing a bike show in a prison, they go... Nah, it's not for me right now, man. I'm having too much fun. And I, these guys didn't have that second chance. So the guy, he goes, remember me in paradise. The other one, one is going to be in paradise, one is going to burn. Just plain and simple. If you are not sure, you better make sure today. You never know what might happen. And as I said, many tell me that they're, they're having too much fun. Others might say, he doesn't want me like this. I get told that a lot. He doesn't want me like this. I'm too bad. And, but that's not our Jesus. He cleans us. He cleans us. Someone asked me once, what does it mean for God to forgive your sins? And I told them, it's kind of like deleting your files. Just as you clean your computer, when you take the, the Google history and you hit clear, and it's gone, you can't see where you're at. That's what it's like, asking for forgiveness. You repent and walk away from it. What I do know is there may not be a second chance. At the beginning, both of them made fun of him. But by the simple words, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. And then he stood up for Jesus. He rebuked 
the other prisoner. I mean, they're hanging there on a cross. And they're having conversation. I mean, it's like, hey, aren't you scared of this guy? Jesus is in the middle. So he's, they're having to lean forward or look back or... It's on the right and left. I only assume they're in the row. But they're having to turn and look and have a conversation. And I've seen documentaries and stuff of how painful just so they could hang. I mean, the Romans didn't do anything easy. They beat you. And so by the simple words of Jesus, just remember me, and he rebuked the man... And in, in, in my mind, what I'm reading this, he took up for Jesus. He took up for my friend. And he said, basically, I'm on his side. Don't you fear God, he said. And he was a sinner, and just like that. Truly, I tell you today that you will be with me in paradise. Just that simple. Do you know Jesus as I do? Do you know him? He's my friend. He's my teacher. He's my healer. He's my financer. He is my savior. If you do not, come forward. If you do not, call the church. I don't know if anybody would answer it. Call my cell phone. 573-723-2414. 573-723-2414. Call my cell phone anytime, day or night. And I will make sure you know Jesus as your Savior, the same that I do. He is my friend. He is my brother. And one more thing. Always remember... Jesus loves you. Thank you. We're going to pray us out. And then uh, if anybody needs prayer, please come forward. Be more than happy to pray with you tonight. I thank you everybody for coming. And uh, I'm just going to pray us out. Father God, we just come to you and I thank you for this word. I thank you for just your love and kindness and your friendship to all of us here. And Father, I just thank you again that if there's anybody out there that needs any prayer, if it's just for the friendship of Jesus Christ, knowing him as your Savior, or if you need prayer of healing, please rewind that computer and listen to my phone number and give me a call. And Father, we just ask for safe traveling tonight. Keep us upright between the ditches. And Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.